Hello and welcome to Talks at Google. My name is Tarek Abdullah and I'm Director of Marketing for the Middle East and North Africa. It's a pleasure to be with you in today's edition of Talks at Google entitled What Art Can Do in Times of Crisis. And it's a conversation with Manuel Rabate, who has been the director of Louvre Abu Dhabi since its inception in 2006, overseeing all aspects of the museum's operations and activity. Before this, he was the deputy director of cultural development from 2005 to 2008 of Musée de Quai Branly Jacques Chirac, managing the launch of the museum's first touring exhibitions, and was also deputy director of the auditorium of Musée du Louvre from 2006 to 2002 to 2006, where he participated in developing new programs accompanying the creation of the Islamic Art Department. He is a graduate of Sciences Po and HSC Business School and a Knight of France's National Order of Merit. We're extremely ordered. To, uh, we're extremely honored to have Manuel with us today. Uh, and uh, for our audience uh, in attendance, please remember that you can ask questions in the live stream chat box, and our wonderful production team will put them up. Uh, so, Manuel, thank you again. Perhaps you can uh, start us off with uh, how you ended up in Abu Dhabi. And first, I would like to say that it's a great uh, pleasure and honor to be uh, with you, Tarek, to be with uh, the Google uh, Middle East uh, team and, and the broadcast. Um, it's, you know, when you when you look at things backwards, you, you always see some kind of logic in your um, adventure or, or, or on so on. I, I was, as you said, um, uh, graduated in political sciences and business, but interested in culture from the beginning. And when I really see uh, the most, uh, the main moment in my career, um, um, I was part of the team in, in the in the Louvre. Uh, from the auditorium side, we were accompanying what became the uh, Department of Islamic Art, a new uh, incredible uh, wing which was open in the in the Louvre uh, itself, in Louvre in Paris. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was my first real encounter with uh, this part of the world uh, right. from a professional right. point of view. I was very lucky to join the Musée du Quai Branly, uh, Jacques Chirac, which is mm -hmm. uh, another building made by uh, Jean Nouvel, and, and which yeah. is uh, in Paris, the last big museum to be born, a museum tackling all non-Western world. And mm -hmm. so this was also my curiosity to the world from, from Paris, but looking at the world and, and uh, and I was very happy to, to, to come for an exhibition in Bahrain. And that's why I really started to, to you know, uh, turn around the region and so on. And, and, uh, and I, I, uh, I joined the team of Agence France Museum who worked on Louvre Abu Dhabi project from the French side. And then it was obvious that I needed to settle in Abu Dhabi to, for the project phase. And uh, we had this uh, mixed team uh, composed of French and, and, and Emirati. And uh, of course, people from all over the world, as you have in uh, in Abu Dhabi. But but this really uh, stimulating mixed team, and, 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 and uh, I became the director uh, a little bit before the opening, and, and then uh, we're here, open and running. Uh, I don't know if everybody's uh, familiar with um, with uh, the Louvre Abu Dhabi itself. I, I have a very short video. Would you would you mind my? Uh, yeah, no, no, share? I think that would be that would be great. Please, just to um, if I can play with uh, uh, techniques. We we know <laughs> we museum people. Sometimes, oh. voila. What a beautiful structure! It's indeed, um, it's indeed a very uh, beautiful uh, building and a beautiful project. This was, this video was the the, the, the thing we produced uh, for our two two our second uh, anniversary, um, and uh, and we were quite pleased to see how the museum has been successful, having more than two million visitors. It was you know I, I mentioned the name of, of the genius, uh, the architect Jean Nouvel. 
who, who invented, who dreamt this building. You know, it's a city on the sea. It's, a, it's a, like a Medina, and we have this incredible cupola, which has been uh, inspired by the uh, the souk and the light that you can have in the oasis when the light is going through the palm tree's leaves. This is a, uh, it was pre-COVID, uh, sadly, but when we were packed and you can see the rain of light effect, it's really beautiful building which worked as well uh, during the day or at night and uh, in which we have artworks embedded also in the very uh, building. This is uh, Jenny also having uh, some artwork tattooed on the walls and, and which is also very specific for the audience because it's the first, um, it's the first uh, universal museum in the Arab world. Universal museum means we tell the story of the world. So you walk through the galleries. I will just uh, take you in a few uh, shots. You walk through time and you see um, civilization in dialogue, religion in dialogue, intolerance, all together exchanging. It's, um, it's an aspirational museum in which we see uh, what's the best in humankind and what we share, what we have in common. And you can see here, like, it's all about the, the how to look, how to learn, how to discover, how to see who you are and how to be connected with the rest of the world. And the layout of the museum or the, the, the choreography is completely chronological, right? So you arrive and, and, and you go through time. Is that, is that absolutely? The... This is, this is, um, uh, you're absolutely right, Tarek. This is one of the specificities of Louvre Abu Dhabi, which is, um, uh, let's say, a universal museum, but born in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the universal museum or encyclopedic museum. The Louvre, the British Museum, the Met in New York, the uh, Hermitage in St. Petersburg, and, and, and many more in, influenced by, by that. We are like this museum trying to uh, understand the world, to grasp the world, born in the 18th up to uh, stretching until, uh, until the 19th and, and 20th century, uh, building collection uh, and, and having this, um, this way of, of uh, bringing the treasure to the world and, and offering to people in, in, uh, in their city this access to the world. Uh, and for the Louvre Abu Dhabi, um, the question was to reinvent this and yeah. to maybe uh, use Louvre on Abu Dhabi. Louvre has this connection to all this context on Abu Dhabi as a hub of the world, as one of the capital of the Middle East, one of the capital of the world, which is definitely connected, connected to the East, to the West, to Africa, to the Indian world, to, to China. And this connection of Abu Dhabi makes it possible to tell a story a uh, universal uh, connected history of art. Yeah, that's it's fantastic. Um, and and just in general, I, I'm, I think now that we've you know you've given us a, a, a brief introduction into the museum, I would love to talk to you more about the art space in the Middle East in general, right? So, what's your point of view on where we are and what um, gives uniqueness to, to the art space in the Middle East? And what are your highlights or perspectives on on the art scene? I, I don't, uh, there are things that I that I uh, believe and I feel living here in Abu Dhabi, and there are things which are uh, the purpose of Louvre Abu Dhabi. Louvre mm -hmm. Abu Dhabi is uh, telling, as you say, in a chronological order, the very long history of art creation um, in uh, yeah in history through uh, chapter by chapter, room by room. You really start uh, uh, twelve thousand years ago, and, and you arrive to the modern time. So the first answer, and I will take a sort of a museum uh, hat, uh, uh, I start by a very long time. The Middle East is mm -hmm. one of the central uh, zone of uh, development of, of mankind, but also of art history and knowledge. And this is what we show throughout the gallery. So we show it in a very um, uh, consistent way. You've seen the first, uh, one of the first objects you see in the galleries is this incredible jo uh, Jordan uh, uh, artwork, so a loan yeah. that from our, our colleagues in, in, in Jordan. Um, mm -hmm. and, and this is uh, uh, for us also a statement to say that um, in this universal story, so we have Asia, we have uh, all the world uh, present in the galleries, but mm -hmm. the Arab world and the Middle East is, is uh, really uh, one of the central zones. So you see that all over the parcours from, uh, um, you yeah. see the bronze uh, uh, object that we have from the UAE, the Marawa vase. So this is like a, a sort of a red line that you can find throughout uh, the 10, 10 to 12,000 years that we are exploring yeah. in the gallery. Mm -hmm. Then we move to 
modernity and there is uh, you would see that in the museum there is an acceleration even that you, you feel in our rooms because of course uh, uh, from archaeology to uh, contemporary there is uh, different uh, more more uh, more material to show by, yeah. by definition. so this acceleration this is something that i really feel uh, happening in in um, in the uae in the region and, and in the uh, in the Middle East. So uh, it's a very vivid scene. It's a very um, uh, developing, uh, curious, open, connected, um, mm -hmm. multi-entry uh, uh, multi readings. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I would say um, uh, people coming from, from various uh, uh, regions, moving, exchanging, which is also very, uh, very interesting. Uh, uh, to see the influence uh, uh, India, the UAE, uh, the Arab world in itself, the dynamism, uh, the dynamic with the Western world, but also the, the connection of the global South and the way to, to, to reinvent. And when, if I zoom in on, on uh, what I know the best, uh, Abu Dhabi and, and, the, and the UAE, um, you have, when you see uh, Barjil, uh, uh, the collection of, of, uh, of Sultan al Qasimi, who's, who's a, um, a great collector and, and a great scholar, um, mm -hmm. he has a fantastic way of representing and, and, and uh, witnessing this, uh, showcasing this uh, vitality of, of, uh, yeah. of the Arab world and the Middle East, uh, not only Arab, the Middle East uh, art. And, and uh, uh, a few decades ago, and he really has this. And uh, I just want, for instance, to congratulate uh, Mohamed Ahmed Ibrahim, who is a great uh, Emirati artist, who will, uh, he will be curated by Maya Allison, and he will be uh, at, the, at the UAE Pavilion in Venice for the next uh, Biennale. And a uh, great artist, he's a fantastic guy. <laughs> and he's yeah. a great, we, we have uh, some of his work exhibited right now in, in, uh, in the Louvre Abu Dhabi. And I'm very pleased to wow. see, you know, it's about connection. Yeah. Louvre Abu Dhabi is not about the modernity of art today. It is about this long story. The so Guggenheim Abu Dhabi will tackle this uh, a little bit more in depth. But we, we yeah. of course, tackle the question of art yeah. today. And, and one of the things that uh, I think fascinates uh, uh, a lot uh, for the Louvre and Abu Dhabi in particular is the extent of partnerships it has with museums in the region here and as well as, as, well as globally. And I think that uh, also from, a, uh, from a, an engagement point of view makes people come back uh, uh, for more and more uh, opportunities rather than treating it as a one-off uh, visit. So, so talk to us a little bit about those partnerships in the Middle East. Like, have you, uh, which museums and, and what topics have you collaborated on? It, it's, uh, I, I would say first, that the, um, to, be, to be very clear for, for, for the viewers, uh, Louvre Abu Dhabi is part of the Department of Culture and Tourism of Abu Dhabi. So uh, the way my, my, my bosses, my, my, my team, my colleagues, my friends are, are all part of this great uh, initiative and great entity, which is um, uh, stretching uh, Abu Dhabi on the cultural scene, on developing, on accompanying, not creating yeah. from scratch because there was there was already a, a lot of stuff, yeah. but let's say uh, pushing it to the next level. And right. uh, uh, Louvre Abu Dhabi is on Sadiat Island, which is one of the islands of. Uh, of Abu Dhabi, huh? so uh, a real island. <laughs> I've heard so many yeah, times. An actual you island. Create, yeah. You created this island. No, no, it's a real island, part yeah. of the archipelago of, of Abu Dhabi. And yeah. uh, there are uh, uh, several projects of museum. Louvre Abu Dhabi was the first, and we were mm -hmm. very happy to, to be open in uh, 2017. So yeah. uh, now, very uh, soon, uh, three years. And uh, we have close to us the Zayed National Museum, which is being uh, Constructed, uh, and which uh, we can see it from uh, on the, from the street when we pass by, which is which will tell the story of the UAE and, and the, the unification of, of the yeah. country. Um, we have the Guggenheim Abu Dhabi, which is also very close, and so you will have this cultural district very active, very uh, um, very strong, not far from us. New York University Abu Dhabi, Sorbonne Abu Dhabi. So it's part also of uh, of uh, transformation of. Uh, 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 let's say um, a, a bet, an investment in the knowledge, in the culture aspect, and, and uh, we're connecting uh, the Zayed University student who will work on on, uh, on history of art or design, will become uh, you know a staff member, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's about an ecosystem. So you're talking about the the collaboration and the connections. Uh, I am right now in a very uh, interesting and stimulating and growing ecosystem. And I'm talking about Abu Dhabi, but yeah. very, uh, very close to us. You have Dubai, 
Al Serkal, uh, uh, the uh, incredible uh, Jamil Art, and, and, uh, and, and if you move to, uh, to Sharjah and, and the, uh, all the museums of Sharjah and the Biennale, so we, we, you really have this, uh, this continuity of actors uh, uh, stimulating, uh, moving, open to the world, um, uh, connected also to the territory, to, so to the uh, Arabness of what is being done, to the uh, uh, knowledge of uh, Khalid, to the comprehension of the Arab world, to the comprehension of the, uh, of the Islamic uh, culture, uh, uh, which is a majority, and, and also of, the, of all the Middle East and, and, uh, uh, and what is close to the Middle East, uh, with, uh, with African world, with uh, uh, Indian uh, subcontinent, and, and, and all this connection. Uh, are uh, uh, links between people, links between institutions, but also, uh, I would say, um, leading uh, uh, transformation of the global south, which impacts uh, all the all the museums. Yeah. So uh, um, the the digital transformation of art and and the experience of art uh, in, a, in a online and in a, you know in a digital context is something that we obviously are very. Uh, uh, actively participating in uh, and really interested in as well. I know that with uh, the pandemic situation and with uh, where we, uh, you know, where we've been for the last few months, uh, many museums have had to close their doors. Uh, mm -hmm. And I know that your experience uh, in the Louvre, both in terms of your response uh, and creating a digital experience very quickly, but then also uh, in terms of the speed at which you reopened are, are both topics that, that I think our viewers would be really interested to hear about. So we'd love to, to hear first about how did you uh, drive the shift to digital as a, as, as a museum? Hello, um, yeah, that's, that, that brings some uh, painful memories also, uh, <laughs> even if I'm, I'm proud of the beginning uh, of the result, uh, it's um, this moment uh, in which uh, we had to close the museum because this this was uh, um, a very tough decision that we took on the 15th of march uh, we tried to keep it open as much as possible and and, uh, and uh, you know to, to put a mitigation plan in in place and finally it was obvious we had to 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 uh, to, um, uh, to to close um, this was also an opportunity in the sense that uh, uh, the world uh, overnight, or not overnight, but in in in, in a few weeks, uh, mm -hmm. uh, became completely um, depending dependent on, on on the digital. We we used the multimedia, we used the image, and we already were quite savvy about it. And, and we had an incredible audio guide uh, on on an app uh, uh, in in seven languages, uh, free to download. And so we already had, had a great interaction with our community, so social uh, media and digital team was quite agile. So we were already there. But yeah. the question was, um, uh, overnight, it becomes our only contact to the public, and mm -hmm. this is where there is a paradigm shift, and this is where there is for us an acceleration. And we discover that uh, our, uh, let's say, our density, our, our, our digital uh, footfall, is actually composed. Yeah, people through the media interact with us, but they mainly go to our website to prepare their visit and to book their ticket and, and, and to get some information. And, and we have a galaxy of kind of interaction, but we don't have uh, something completely channel and, and so on. So we had to adapt. We had to go back to the essence of what we're doing. And um, uh, maybe I, I will share a few images also on, on the education, for instance, with that, yeah, which yeah. is at the, at the very nature, the key uh, the base of what we do. Um, uh, the, the, uh, how do you uh, how do you uh, give uh, access to the? We used to have <laughs> tons of children every morning. Uh, yeah. We had twenty to thirty groups of children coming, and it was like one of the pillar of our of our mission. So, how do you reach out? How do you participate? Right. to the education mission. So we had to, um, if I may uh, share some uh, oh, element, I will, I, will, uh, I will just uh, show you this, uh, because it's, it's, it's interesting to, to see how we had to, um, uh, you know, uh, adapt. Uh, and at the same time, the, the families were all doing home from, uh, yeah. work from home. So we needed to have something fun, pleasant, yeah. uh, uh, Playing with the collection and and, uh, and able to to um, you know to uh, to to be uh, of interest for the for the family for the educator. So we had to 
uh, translate our tools into the digital and uh, yeah. uh, to compensate uh, the absence of the museum. So tools to, to give uh, content, uh, virtual visit, which we didn't push too much before because we, we were very upset by the, the materiality Actual, physical of, visits, of yeah. the present. But yeah. we developed that and that was it's not completely original, but we made it and it was part of the mission. And then we moved to a more crazy project uh, and uh, we have this incredible uh, experience uh, with Sandwalk Collective, uh, We Are Not Alone which is immersive story uh, told by uh, incredible voices, William Dafoe, uh, Jean Nouvel himself, in, in, in six languages. And it's a science fiction story using our building. So mm -hmm. it, it's completely experimental. It was really, a, a, yeah, an experimentation, which was possible in this very, very moment. We, uh, we developed new partnership uh, mm -hmm. also for the region, and, and I'm sure that uh, Almost everybody in, in, the, in the Middle East knows uh, Andrami, um, the great uh, music platform. Um, and and uh, we had a, a deal with them. We curate artworks on exhibition. They curate soundtrack. And we they made some uh, playlists for us, inspired by what we are. And that was a new way of, of uh, yeah. living uh, the digital uh, uh, and not as a gadget, as something which is bringing you to the content, which is yeah. always what we try to do. And do you see? And do you see even after things return to the way they were? Do you see the digital experience assuming a more important role in the future of the museum, or do you think it's something that is more related to the moment we're in now? Can you unlearn to use Zoom, Teams, and, and uh, to second <laughs> to to have uh, uh, digital meetings and and, uh, and digital uh, uh, paperwork done all day? No, you cannot unlearn. So there was there was an acceleration which was shared not by everybody, because uh, some people didn't have the digital access. And this is one of the next uh, discussion, I'm sure, for, for the, uh, how, to, how can we bridge that? But for, for, uh, for the Louvre Abu Dhabi, yes, the change was uh, obvious, very important. Um, it was also, for us, uh, it's about um, being um, consistent and, uh, and meaningful. Right. Uh, I, I, I said gadget. Because sometimes it can be uh, the digital versus the artwork can be gadget. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I really believe in the materiality of the artwork. I believe mm -hmm. in the, uh, you know, Walter Benjamin is talking about the aura of the, in, in the age of reproduction, the aura of the authentic artwork. And there, mm -hmm. are, there is something which is very important. So in Louvre Abu Dhabi, we're presenting real objects, real artifacts, very old or very new, but, but very precious, and we present them in the same space and you and this will will remain what has changed is the cleverness the agility of how you can use the digital tools as tools around it to build an understanding to build a preparation or just to build your pleasure i mean you, you want to listen to music and to walk into our, our galleries fine you you want to uh, connect to choose you like this artwork you want to keep it you're doing a soundtrack why not it's other mm -hmm. sorry other way of interacting got it and this for me is part of the new way the new uh, approach uh, of the museum as uh, th there are there is not one uh, single uh, level of reading there are several and the digital is part of the way now that we are thinking our, our way to interact with our visitors Got it. And and where are you now in terms of the physical museum? Is it is it open again at the moment? And and how are Absolutely. you managing? And how are you managing? Good, good point. Good point. So uh, I mentioned it was painful. <laughs> that was so. We can you imagine your your, your raison d'être is to welcome visitors and to keep precious artworks, and then yeah. you 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 close the door uh, for the uh, public and, and staff public, safety. Yeah. So I would say we we divided our activity during this time into three channels. One was the very, very physical protection of the artwork. Right. You need, it's like, it's like babies, it's, like, it's very, very fragile. So we had a team, security, collection managers, curators, um, uh, uh, maintenance, uh, all the team. I mean, I'm really thankful for, for a lot of people who during the uh, hard time of, uh, lockdown, semi-lockdown, partial lockdown, but, but really uh, uh, difficulties to travel on, on, on complexity and, and we didn't know uh, that much about the virus. So uh, uh, the team uh, maintained the continuity of the protection of the artwork and now they are 
absolutely uh, well on, on all. The, so it was the artworks of Louvre Abu Dhabi collection owned by the government of Abu Dhabi, but also the loans that we have from uh, uh, 13 French museums. And we had an exhibition on Forusia, which was closed, but we, we had to be the um, uh, right. custodians of all these artworks. So it was very important to, to make sure they were safe and, and to check uh, all the time. And this was done, and this was done uh, very uh, importantly. I should mention uh, Jordan, Saudi, um, um, Oman. So we're working with, with uh, many, uh, many international and, and regional uh, uh, partners. So we needed to, to reassure everybody. So that was one, one big activity. Uh, the second big activity was what I said on, on the digital, this acceleration, this transformation, which was quite fun. So we had a mix of brainstorm on, on the, we, we, we had this gold mine of, of, uh, of content. And the question yeah. was, how can we make it accessible? And for, on, on, the, on the third pillar, not, uh, not the less, uh, is uh, the, um, uh, the question of uh, uh, preparing the reopening. And uh, as uh, painful as uh, closure was, uh, we wanted to make sure that we would not close again. And uh, I touch wood, and I hope it will not be the case, uh, but um, to make the Louvre Abu Dhabi the safest place, place to visit on Earth, we needed to be Uh, absolutely uh, drastic in our organization. So I mentioned we are part of the Department of Culture and Tourism. So we were discussing with the regulator on what would be a visit, what, what was acceptable uh, from, let's say, uh, uh, the visitor point of view and what was absolutely necessary. So we put uh, scanners, we put dis social distancing. The mask now is completely obvious. Uh, And I think that it is mandatory and needed. Uh, we had a time ticket, so we needed to shift our booking system to, to prepare the visit, giving the information. Uh, we use the AI to calculate the maximum number of people we could have in any uh, um, room, to, to, you know, really to, to, to be able to, uh, to offer the safest visit. Uh, Yeah, say first, and at the same time, giving the pleasure of the visitors to come. Yeah. So Must we managed, it's not a joke, we managed to keep to stay open only 100 days, and yeah. <laughs> that was not calculated. We discovered the, the, you mean, you the mean day closed. just after that, when we counted yeah. the, really the days. Yeah. And uh, I'm very proud of that because our, our, our colleagues, um, especially in the West, were not that lucky on, on their, yeah. I think it was a question of yeah, preparation and maybe digital equipment, or, but for a new museum like us, 100 days just in our third uh, year, uh, we, we, we miss them. And, and, uh, and now the visit, in a way, paradoxically, is exceptional because of the low attendance, time to go back to normal today. It's incredible. You, you, have, a, you have the galleries not for yourself, but you, you can have a, um, a very uh, comfortable visit, very, uh, very nice visit. We reactivated the restaurant. We uh, reopened with new uh, new offering also which were just uh, starting we had a, uh, a deal with uh, Phuket in Abu Dhabi which is so that was also part of the so you can enjoy you can come to the museum enjoy artworks and then have a great meal if you feel a uh, sport mood we have a kayak around the museum oh, yeah. which we also reactivated so okay. this is this I would recommend also to, to do for the <laughs> Google like view. Fun. <laughs> it's, it's not only fun, I mean, yeah, no, it's super fun, but yeah. it's also um, uh, when you have a building which has mm -hmm. the strength of uh, Jean Nouvel's building, um, mm -hmm. it's made to be seen from a lot of angles. And some of these angles, and, and Jean uh, Nouvel did it on purpose, yeah. some of the angles come are, are today on the scene. So oh, really? it's really interesting to see it and to rediscover or to discover the, the, the building from, from all sides. So, for instance, the kayak is, uh, I was talking about the digital, but you can do it in the sports world. It's another way of having a look at um, something which is now becoming an institution of Abu Dhabi, but in a different, different way, different twist, which is your, your, your approach to yeah. art. Yeah. Well, we have a lot of um, audience questions. I, I want to turn to a couple of those before I ask you about the role of art today. Um, but uh, I think... Uh, Uh, let's take uh, let's take the first one that we got, which is from uh, Ibrahim. He's uh, asking you. Uh, he's saying thank you for being with us. He has a question about what's the one element of running a museum that nobody would ever have thought of or expected. Um, ah, uh, on my what's the uh, maybe 
maybe the diversity you you would i think plenty of people have have, have images uh, uh of, of the museum team uh, either people lost in their books or or, or just selling tickets at the entry and, and uh, actually um, uh, in my case and i think in, in the case of, of almost all of my colleagues it's more the, um, the diversity of tasks it's mm -hmm. um, as i said you at the same time uh, we are uh, completely part of a touristic world and we are a place which is receiving public a lot of public plenty of public i see there, there is a question on, on accessibility and, yeah. and the universal museum so it has to be universally accessible which right. means that um, uh, people with um, uh, mobility uh, challenges uh, can completely come. We, we, we're made for wheelchairs. We're made for we, we, and we have special uh, thematics. So it's about uh, receiving public and, and welcoming uh, people from from all over the world and, and with uh, uh, whoever they are on, on, on the way they want. Uh, and this is very important. So there is a flow of, of visitors. And at the same time, um, you have a team which is uh, questioning um, the history of art. The very nature of beauty, of sublime, of connection, of history. So, the, 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 can you imagine the, the, the mix of all these people who have the same interest, which is sharing uh, the treasures with the world? But, and so, some will explain. Some. Um, so, it's it's a variety, and and uh, uh, and maybe maybe to say it's uh, the beauty of such building. Uh, I, I've, I've, I've been quite. I'm, I've been lucky in my career because I started really working at the Louvre. <laughs> Every night I would go out of the pyramid and I was like, "Wow, Musée du Quai Branly was not bad at all, but the Louvre Abu Dhabi is definitely uh, breathtaking, whatever the moment of the day." And this is, um, yeah, maybe beautiful places is is a little plus. Amazing. Um, so. Uh there's a question from Elisa where, who's wondering what's the process for an artist to showcase their work in the Louvre? How is the selection consideration process? Hello, this is this is what I meant by uh, we are the museum of the long time. The, the interaction with the um, uh, artistic community uh, is not necessarily by showing them or exhibiting them uh, in, in, in large number. Uh, uh, the, the case of Mohamed Ahmed Ibrahim is collected to, in the collection of Musée du uh, Centre Pompidou. It was part of the way to display the UAE vibrant scene, and this is how we, it, it, it was put in the narrative. We had some experiences with, uh, at the opening, uh, uh, for, for, for a few months, uh, Collab, which was a, a moment in which we had an experience between UAE based artists, uh, Emirati and, and non-Emirati, uh, working with French manufacturers and, and also uh, programming. So I would say it's driven by project. We, we cannot, uh, sadly, uh, I regret, but we cannot, it's not our mandate to explore the full uh, mm. uh, creativity scene. I, I regret it <laughs> immensely. It's more on project. We will work together. We will uh, have an installation at one time. We will have things. So if you have projects, propose them to us. But it will be driven by projects because what we're telling in the in the in the galleries is more a long history of art, yeah. and uh, it's more something that would like the Louvre in Paris nurture the creativity of the artist. Right. Uh, so Thank you for that. Um, so I'll, I'll turn back and ask you a question about the role of art today, and then we'll take some more audience questions if that works for you. Um, so I think the given the, the moment in time that we're in now, um, art doesn't necessarily always come out as the number one priority for people. Um, but what can art and museums specifically do in the current situation? Are the roles changing? Are there any new innovations? That are coming uh, out of this moment that you think uh, that you think are worth uh, worth noting and talking about. I know after a crisis uh, which is not completely over, sadly, uh, it's normal that art uh, may appear as uh, not necessary. I understand that. I, I don't. I did agree, but I understand uh, because it's about. Survival is about a yeah. uh, cool moment, and, and, uh, and I always think of, of people, uh, frontliners, and, and people mm -hmm. who, who lost uh, uh, something, someone uh, during this time. So it is um, uh, it, 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 
needs a little bit of, of projection to understand. I think art is necessary for the um, uh, uh, resilience and readaptability and and, uh, and, uh, and getting back to the world. I think art, uh, and especially uh, the places in which art is presented, uh, as we try to do in, uh, let's say, um, elevation mode, uh, in, in, uh, in uh, accessible, digestible, but also aspirational mode, can uh, really participate to um, the reconstruction of, of uh, the society, of the psyche of individuals. So at the individual level or at the collective level, I really think that creativity, stimulation, connectivity we, will play a role in, in, in surviving uh, the crisis. Yeah. For us, um, we are a museum which is talking about the connection and how the connection between humans, creativity is good and how it's right. producing wonderful artworks always. Mm -hmm. So the virus, which was forcing us not to connect to each other, <laughs> was attacking our very DNA. So yeah. by re-offering this capacity to connect, to get inspired, to understand the long term, to understand also, uh, yes, the exchanges, the story of art, relativity of, um, of the movement and inspiration or, 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 or uh, masterpieces of significance, all these questions, that sometimes, or most of the time, without a precise answer, are very useful to, to uh, I think, to, um, uh, yeah, to, to foster the morale and, and the reconstruction in the fact. We, we, we chose uh, as, a, as a, not only a marketing uh, tool, but as, as, a, as an entry uh, uh, point of our reopening campaign, the Mindful Museum. And this yeah. is what we meant. It's a place in which we, we are reconnected with our humanity. We are reconnected with the world, with the artworks, through the artworks, through the, through the artists. Through, and, and this is very important. I'm not saying that it is survival. I think survival is the first step. But I'm yeah. saying that beyond survival, for our elevation, art is really, really important. And you would see in the galleries, yeah. Yeah. Uh, humanity uh, adapts and always goes beyond all these rights. Which, which was my next question, because when you, when you think about art during moments like this, when you go back in history and you think about you know, the Black Plague and what art looked like around that moment and you know, the world wars and, what, uh, and how that reflected on art, how do you think artists are going to express this moment in the future? Uh, and when you build those extensions to the, to the Louvre Abu Dhabi in the future that look at this time that we're in now, what do you think it will look like from the artist's perspective? Uh, we, we, that, that's, uh, that's very interesting because we don't know. We don't know. Uh, uh, I think there will be first, uh, not first, or in parallel, there will be um, a, a collective uh, memorial uh, or, or, let's say, remembrance exercise yeah. on how do we um, uh, tell the story of what happened during uh, the year 2020 and, 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 and what did it meant for the world. And, and, uh, there are things which are obvious, uh, the digital transformation, connection, stopping and transport, uh, uh, sadly uh, uh, losing people. And that, that, that's that's we, what we know. But what are the waves, what are the repercussions we will see? We, we launched at Louvre Abu Dhabi a program to collect the archive of the pandemic touching us, just to be able oh, to really? understand. Not, not, not only for, we are a place of, of <laughs> we yeah. collect things, so we, yeah. we needed to collect the history uh, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, by definition, because we, we work a lot with historian or art historian, you know that the meaning uh, appears after. So yes. this work on, on, on the memory, so we have lots of artists who are working on, on the memory and on the, on the long time and so on, and this will appear. And I think it will be uh, also very intimate because in any, uh, uh, I mean, for, for uh, Picasso and Guernica uh, uh, during the, 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 um, the war in Spain, and, 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 and you know, like it, it can yeah. be a masterpiece, which is a revolt against uh, the virus. It can be a, a complete. Uh, uh, we don't know. We don't know. Yeah. 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 It would be an interesting period to see how it uh, it affected the capacity to create. Um, uh, the thing is, uh, it's we have to think of, of the difficulties for the artist to uh, to sustain a, a living. The artist. I'm talking, thinking of the. Uh, Visual artists, but also uh, all the performance yeah. artists, and, and for, for, for 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 an institution like the museums, we are uh, let's say we we are a little bit of a rock. We 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 we've been hit, but uh, we're there. Uh, when it's only about uh, people, human, it's it's fragile. So mindful museum means also uh, um, to think about them and and, uh, and to welcome them in, in, in the world. Right. 
Uh, Majd um, is asking uh, a question that I, th I find quite interesting. You know, we talked about the layout of the museum. So his question is, how do you feel people respond to the connection story of the museum in the sense that its approach and layout are different from a traditional museum? Um, how, 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 do you, how do you perceive people uh, and how they respond to that? I, uh, I think they're very touched. Um, uh, it's like, if you say, we are in the business of changing the life of people, it may be a little presumptuous. Mm -hmm. But I think that um, uh, a visit to Louvre Abu Dhabi can trigger something can uh, open mind, can shift perspective, can uh, show you something about, uh, uh, yes, this, this, this uh, connection of, of uh, humanity that you didn't necessarily, so on, on the, uh, I, 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 by definition, I'm, I'm walking a lot around the museum and, and I'm, I'm doing a lot of visit on, on, on UC, uh, um, uh, you see people who could be uh, moved, people who could uh, be discussing with their family, with their friends, uh, now in smaller groups, but uh, you, you, you see that it, it, it's provocating something. Does it change you drastically? No, it's, uh, one experience is not enough, but it, 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 it's putting something inside you. It's changing you. It's yeah. op opening you. And uh, because we had also the in, in this uh, complex time, the question of the identity uh, is raised uh, very often. In Louvre Abu Dhabi, since we have artworks from all over the world, um, it's a, I think it's an interesting place to think about your identity and how you are uh, connected to globalization or how you are, uh, are you from this territory? Are you uh, passing by? Are you settling in? What is your, on, on, on finding objects of your culture, close to your culture. And, and see how they are connected in this uh, overall uh, choir of, of humanity is also, uh, I think, very important. And, and this is very specific, and this can be very moving, coming from the me to the uh, you, and then to the us, which works in the gallery, in, in the very yeah. alchemy, alchemy of the gallery. Majd asks, uh, what has been a magic moment for you in the art world ever since establishing the Louvre in Abu Dhabi? Oh, magic. One one magic moment. Uh, well, many many uh, the no the one of the first one was the first day of opening to the public after the inauguration. We yeah. wanted to welcome the first visitor. We were opening at ten o'clock, and uh, and uh, I had a gift for the first visitor. You know, yeah. uh, let's take, take a picture. And uh, it was a book. And actually, uh, uh, someone from the team just briefed me. Actually, the first visitor is is a, a little lady. <laughs> and there were, we had these two adorable uh, little girls who were uh, just uh, uh, waiting to get in. And and uh, yeah. I was so moved because this was. Uh, um, I, I, I spoke about education and transmission. Yeah. And I think this yeah. is really important. And this is why yeah. I miss so much. Uh, having uh, uh, children <laughs> on, on, yeah. on school visitors in Louvre Abu Dhabi, it's because this is also there that um, uh, incredible uh, uh, vision of Abu Dhabi. Uh, uh, I mentioned yeah. the conference because I think he really uh, he said Louvre Abu Dhabi is a gift to the world, mm -hmm. and, and it's a gift also to the to the generation to come. And this is this is very important because this is this transmission which is happening. So I was moved to see it in the flesh with yeah. uh, not one first visitor but two little. Uh, Two little girls were excited yeah. to get inside the museum, and uh, no, and, and then every exhibition, every new artworks, every uh, yeah. uh, every new installation, every uh, uh, is is uh, is uh, always. Uh, very and and on the on the on the topic of children, I, I've been there with my kids, and, and you have this the whole section uh, that uh, two two levels or three level section for children. The children museum. Yeah, the children's museum, which which is uh, which is really wonderful because you go to museums around the world, they have. They sort of like they tick the box, you know. Okay, I have a little sand pit and some, you know, blocks and stuff like that, and you know, maybe they look a bit like the castle. But I think in in the case of uh, the Louvre in Abu Dhabi, it seems to it's it's like it's such a true uh, expression, and and uh, it really it really does speak to how important uh, you obviously see children in this journey. Uh, that, that and Tarek, the, the, this children's museum is one of the, I think there was a question on what is very specific in Louvre Abu Dhabi. So the narrative on the fact that uh, there is no uh, separation of artworks or separation of period is specific yeah. of the galleries, but the children's museum is uh, 
is really an invention that we had for the Louvre Abu Dhabi, um, betting on education, betting on children, betting on, on the, uh, let's say, uh, we say technically gamification, but like let's say the fun way or the interactive way as a way to educate the the the, 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 the gays yeah. and, and and to give the keys to the families and to the educator. That was and, and to put real artwork like yeah. master. Yeah, all these ingredients are really specific to this place, which is part of the of the program of the museum. Yeah. Now, speaking of that, actually, about about putting real art pieces in, in, in close access to people, one of the things that is quite unique about the Louvre in Abu Dhabi is how exposed the artwork and the pieces are. Um, and uh, I know it, it feels like a more a philosophical choice that there's no, there are no barriers between the rooms, but there are also no barriers between the ex the exhibitions and the or the actual items and and the people. Um, and I was just wondering practically, how do you protect the artwork from from damage or from unintentional or, or maybe even intentional damage, given it's so close and uh, and and like unguarded, if you like. Uh, no, I'm sure it's guarded, but I'm you know what I mean. I'm, I'm super glad if you if you. I mean, uh, we have a great we have a great security team, so I'm I'm uh, yeah. I'm, I'm glad they are here, and I'm glad you don't feel them too much. Yeah. <laughs> so you this see is, them, it means what you're saying is perfect. Yeah. No, um, the uh, this is a very serious matter. We, we are uh, we have the utter, uh, uttermost uh, uh, demanding uh, rules in terms of uh, artwork preservation and protection. Um, but because we are a new museum, we could adapt from the start. Uh, all the mechanism to display in order to have the best uh, the best way of seeing them. It's really a, a place in which you can turn around the artwork, you can have the visibility. When you have showcases, they are quite huge and they allow you to see very well. When we can, when the materiality of the object allows us, we don't put barriers and we... And we uh, there is always someone not far. <laughs> but yeah. but we, 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 uh, we, have, we have really adapted... Uh, all the technical and human um, uh, strategies of, of, uh, of security on, on the artwork conservation in order to make sure that we would uh, yeah, give this um, uh, feeling of, of, uh, of freedom and uh, of accessibility. Because we, uh, again, this is a, a, a way of interacting. We believe yes. in the materiality of the object. We believe in the simultaneous presence of the visitor and the artworks, which means the less uh, barriers, the less distance there is, there are uh, the 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 the, um, the better you you, you can uh, really integrate the the, the, the the artworks. Question is, of course, never to go beyond the limit when you put yeah. the artworks. Yeah. But the team, our team is actually uh, quite strong in uh, they finding a, a really a really good balance because I think it uh, it creates that inviting sense that you don't get in other museums. Like uh, there's an almost an intimidation sometimes when you go to a museum and then there's a big red. Uh, uh, cordon or barrier that doesn't allow yeah. you to go, or you piece a piece of art behind a glass plexi, a plexiglass uh, frame, and, and you can't really see the detail and so on. So I think you guys yeah. did an amazing uh, job with that. I, I, will, I will not point finger at our colleagues. It's also uh, a museum is, a, as you say, a balance between yeah. uh, protecting uh, masterpieces of humanity and, and, and showing them to the public, which of course is a minimal risk. So. Yeah. Um, how do you do the mix? In our case, because we are uh, a museum of the 21st century, because we had this concern from start, and because it's part of our DNA, we we, uh, we really uh, have been super innovative. I think in the, in the way to showcase. Yeah, I agree. And it's also part of the um, evolution. So you, you understand Louvre Abu Dhabi. Half of the artwork that you would see are coming from Louvre Abu Dhabi collection, which is yeah. growing, and the other half is either from um, uh, regional loans, as I said, uh, from our colleagues from, from, uh, from the Middle East, but uh, 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 yeah, a good, a good uh, 300, uh, 250 artworks uh, at any time are coming from the French museums, from all the French museums. So um, uh, there is this rotation. So we also want to have the accessibility on, on the, uh, we want it to be a place in which you come and you also come back. Because you will yeah. see it's always the same story of humanity, but told with uh, new art. Right. Uh, so in the in the few in the few minutes we have left, I wanna, I'm keen to get uh, more of the questions that we have answered. So Fatma asks, how can you? Uh, sorry, can you tell us about a work of art you're proud to have in the Louvre? And then there's another question similar to this about a particular piece of art that you always wanted to bring to the Louvre, and that one's one. from Alexandra. So let's uh, 
let's tackle those together, shall we? One one artwork is a is a difficult choice. Uh, uh, no, I wouldn't take one. It's uh, now we we have um, uh, it's the Louvre Abu Dhabi. Uh, I, I didn't mention, but it, it has been a long project. Before being a museum, it has been a project, and and the project was uh, uh, initiated in two thousand and six seven, uh, and we opened uh, ten years after. And during these ten years, um, there is an incredible collection which was being built. Bought and, 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 and chosen, and uh, I think that on, on this as uh, this this uh, growing of the collection uh, kept on after the opening and still going on. And so this is the legacy of uh, of, of the um, uh, Abu Dhabi government on, on the gift to the to the generation to come. Uh, in this collection, we have uh, several absolutely. Um, uh, magic masterpieces. So I have my own. We have this. Um, a Bactrian princess, uh, which is magic. We have the Chinese dragon from the Wearing State, which was, I think, in, in the presentation. We have um, uh, a lion uh, uh, from Spain or Italy, uh, a roaring lion, which is a unicum of, of Islamic art. Um, we have this very delicate uh, painting that you also have seen in the presentation of uh, yeah. by, by Osman Bey, which is which has become one of the icons of, of the museum because it's uh, because again the, <laughs> the activity of of uh, of, uh, of learning with this young Emir reading, which makes sense <laughs> in, yeah, in the yeah, region, yeah. which makes sense in uh, in the Louvre Abu Dhabi, is is right. so. Uh, sorry, you, you asked me one, and I'm telling a few. But uh, what I mean no, is, no, no, uh, I think these are great. I, I understand uh, you can't uh, pick favorites. It's uh, all, and, and all of what them. About, uh, what about a, a piece that you would love to bring uh, to answer Alexander's questions? Is, is there anyone? Is there any piece that you would like to tell us about that you would love to bring? Uh, this this uh, the, uh, too difficult. Be careful what we wish for because in this, no, no. We, as I said, we are uh, always. Um, we are always uh, talking with uh, French museums, uh, yeah. which are partners for, for a very long time of the museum. And we are always uh, preparing um, the next uh, loans. So uh, uh, I, I don't want to say things. We, we, we have, uh, uh, despite, the, uh, despite the pandemic, despite the difficulty to travel, thanks to yeah. the uh, great commitment of, of the of the French museums, we, we have uh, secured uh, some very important uh, loans which are coming. Okay. So I'm, I'm doing a teaser here. I'm not wishing for things. I'm, I'm, I know yeah. that uh, thanks to the generosity of some of the French museums, we will be able yeah. to once more, despite the difficulties we're facing, we will be able to uh, to uh, give you something worth coming back to visit. So so stay so, tuned. Stay tuned for that. Very soon. OK, excellent. Um, Salma asks, uh, you made some great changes out of necessity because of the pandemic. What about once the pandemic is over? Uh, I think there's another question also about innovation. I'm just trying to find it. There's a question about innovation that came up as a result of the pandemic. I think you covered what the Louvre did. Yeah, that's Chantal's question. Has there been any innovation in the art world due to the pandemic? And how has making art and celebrating it changed? I think you answered about the innovations that you intend to keep for the Louvre, but in general, from from the art world and and from the museum world, what have you seen that you think uh, is interesting uh, as a result of the pandemic? A, a lot of talk on connectivity, which were yeah. which have been, um, uh, I mean, the fact that we are having this talk online and and the. the, the, the balance between, let's say, the digital fatigue of, of too many talks, but also uh, the capacity to choose what you want to listen and the uh, and, uh, uh, capacity to bring uh, people from all over the world at a, at a given time, uh, mm -hmm. for me, uh, as, as uh, being uh, very useful in the art world by connect, connecting the yeah. community. We have yeah. been connected very quickly with our colleagues in China, in, in mm -hmm. Hong Kong, we were in Korea, we were discussing with them also to, to learn from them when we were preparing the reopening and, and uh, yeah. very good for, for this kind of uh, solidarity uh, mm -hmm. uh, relationship that we had. Same thing with our colleagues in the West, I mean, going on, going on, the, on the West side. So we, we were really connected to the world on, on this kind of um, pleasure that we had each time a museum was reopening was so genuine and sincere. So we were connected by that and, and by exchanging. So I yeah. think this kind of... Uh, uh, yeah, network uh, doesn't vanish uh, overnight, and, and this right. will stay. 
we we are uh, um, launching uh, for our third anniversary um, with in partnership with NYUAD um, uh, an international uh, conference uh, symposium on on called the reframing the museum, which will be one of the big moment uh, not post but uh, post crisis of post fourth crisis of COVID, uh, uh, and we have an incredible set of. Uh, of, um, of uh, speakers coming from all the museum world and the academic world using mm -hmm. the network of Lova Budabi and the network of NYUAD. Yeah. And we will be able to bring all of them uh, also because now we can uh, make a real merge between digital and, and, and physical presence, which was not uh, that easy before. Today, yeah. uh, there are new formats also, a new way of exchanging knowledge, of exchanging uh, projects, uh, which have been born, and I think, uh, uh, yeah, there will be a, uh, maybe it will be go, it will go down a little bit, but I, mm -hmm. I, I think it will stay. Amazing. Uh, okay, so I will take probably the last question, given the time we have, is a question from Kevin, uh, who uh, thank you says thank you. Uh, he's a big fan of the Louvre. He just wants to ask, what efforts are taken, if any, to preserve art and history in our unstable region, given how much has been lost between Lebanon, Iraq, Syria. Uh, and other and other uh, and other places where we're seeing we're seeing a lot of loss of culture and art. Uh, sure. What what do you what, what are you seeing around the region that that is uh, assuring uh, in this in this regard? Uh, so the museum mandate is to preserve artworks which are uh, yeah. giving uh, loan or or, or or deposit or, or owned and, and, and to present them to the public and to study them. So. Um, uh, we are a good tool of preservation. We are uh, not a good tool of direct intervention by, by definition. Yeah. Um, uh, for, for, for the, it's a very good question, and, and, and I would uh, like to point to a great uh, institution called Alif, which was also born uh, out of uh, out of uh, uh, relationship between uh, France and the UAE, yeah. um, uh, but, but gathering uh, international partners. And which is intervening in uh, not only in, in the region, but uh, very active in the region. Currently, uh, very active in Lebanon, but uh, uh, in Iraq, and, and, and having having a great project, which is uh, um, uh, found to uh, found project of, of uh, um, heritage on art in danger. And, and they, they are, uh, so they, they they give money to operators who will be quite efficient on the ground. Yeah. And this is one of the, for me, one of the, um, uh, my, my chairman uh, is, is, is uh, also part of this, of the board of Alip, and, and I know it's coordinated. This is, this is part of the, on the Louvre uh, in Paris, also part of the, also part uh, this, of is, this kind of, of uh, uh, agile way of intervening. The, mm -hmm. the takeaway from, from me would be, um, uh, each institution has a specific mandate, and this is the right, the ladies to have the right uh, approach on, on the right assessment of the situation to be able to, to uh, uh, actively, to be, to have more positive uh, um, uh, impact than negative. Excellent. Manuel, thank you so much. Uh, it's always a pleasure, and uh, we really appreciate the time that you've given us today. And it's uh, it's been a wonderful, uh, wonderful chat. And uh, we hope Perfect, that Eric. we can uh, invite you back again uh, physically at some point in the future. It would be a pleasure, and I hope you will uh, come <laughs> physically and digitally yeah, yeah, yeah. to the Louvre of Budapest. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Manuel. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye.